Hey everybody, I received a question from at least two of you asking how to use different companies with the same connector. Do you need to duplicate anything? Do you need to do? Let me just show you that. It's not as user friendly as you would think, but uh, let's try to make it as user friendly as possible. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? First thing that I'll do is just click on get data. Actually, before that, to make sure that we are setting up everything correctly, I'll just clear any credentials that I might have that I might have from my previous exercises. So I'll just click on transform data, data source settings, and then I'll scroll down to the bottom and find zero connector. And I'll just click on clear permissions, delete, and that should be good to go now. So I can click on get data and search for zero, zero, connect. And now it says that I need to sign in, which I will do. So after you've entered your username and password, just click on login and you should be presented with this screen. So Power BI Connector wants to connect to, wants to access um, and then the list of organizations. So I can see that I have two connected organizations already, but if you want to select more, just click on this select another organization and then you can either select Lotus, uh, so your, any of your organizations that you have access to. So I have already selected everything that I need to and now I can click on continue with two organizations and I'll click on connect. So now Power Query window will open and I can see now that I received a list of two records and the zero connector dot contents, the function that this custom connector exposes has been called with three empty parameters actually. And what this does is it actually gets us the list of all organizations. So what I'll do, because I'll need this query later, I'll just rename this, double click and rename these two organizations. And now I will click on convert to table. Okay. And I will expand this. I will not use the original column as prefix. And you can see we have quite some parameters here. This tenant ID is the parameter which we want, but it doesn't tell us much on its own. Um, there's this tenant ID, which is more descriptive for us. So, um, yeah, what, what I can do right now is just go ahead and let's say I want to get the contacts from this demo company. I can just right click on the tenant ID and click on copy, then right click here, new query, blank query, and then type in equals zero connector. Um, IntelliSense already suggests uh, my function. So I will just start typing and press tab and now I can do embrace. And as the end point, I will go to zero documentation here and I'll go to contacts. Contacts is what I want to get from zero. So this URL is the end point that I need. So I'll just copy this and go back to Power Query. So I'll enter this here and now I'll do another parameter. So just a comma and open up this uh, parenthesis, go to organizations again and um, copy the tenant ID from the demo customer again, copy, go here and that paste that in. Now I'll click enter and I can see that I received the list of all my contacts, which is perfect. And if I go click on the list here and click on convert to table, okay, and then expand this, okay, so here are all my contacts, perfect. All right, so that's the list from the demo company. Now we can already see how I would go about uh, retrieving the contacts from the other organization. I could just go ahead and find the other tenant ID, so um, Lotus Trial 2, tenant ID, copy, go back to uh, my query. Maybe what I can do is uh, just duplicate that Lotus trial contacts and I'll go back to source and replace that, that ID with my, with my other ID. And as you can see now, if I go back to the last step, I only have two contacts, which is correct because these are the only two contacts that I have in my zero at the moment. Now, these tenant IDs are fine, but we can go one step further and just make this a bit more user friendly. So you'll probably be using these tenant IDs a lot and um, having to deal with this with these weird magic strings is um, not optimal. So what I like to do is go back to organizations, right click, click on reference, and I will just go to this tenant ID and click on remove other columns. Um, no, I did that too early. 
So I just removed one last step. What I would like to do is just filter these organizations. So let's say I want to get the demo company's tenant ID. And let me just uh, write that here. So I'll just rename this referenced query tenant ID like that. And now I can go here to tenant name and filter that by demo company. Click on OK. And I only have one row. That's perfect. Now I can go back to tenant ID, right click, remove other columns. And now I will need to do one step here with, with the formula itself. I would like to extract this, this, this text here. So to do that, I first need to extract the, uh, the column. Um, so I'll do that with, with square braces and I'll type in tenant ID, enter. I still have the list. So I will, I would like to retrieve the first element from that list. And now what I can do is go back to demo company. Let me rename that to be for, for better clarity, demo company contacts. And now I can go back to my source and replace this weird string, this GUID with demo tenant ID and enter. And I get the exact same thing, but this time is a lot more user friendly because it's, it's under a nice text and I don't need to worry about this. It should just work. And I can do exactly the same thing for, for my other tenant. I will just right click here and click on duplicate. Now I will rename that to tenant ID and I just need to go back to, um, to filter source and let me just remove the filter source here, go back to source. And then under tenant name, let's do the filter again. So a lot of trial. Okay. Filter zero. And that's, that's the other tenant ID. Let's see. Yes. So demo company, that one, um, a lot of trial, the other one. So a lot of trial contacts. I have two of them. If I go back to source and replace that with out of trial tenant ID, press enter. And let's see if I get the same thing. And I believe I do. So that's, that's it actually. That's the final step. And that's how to do it. It's not that complicated, is it? Uh, if you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this, like this video, leave down a comment and see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you so much. Bye.